Hello everyone, I'm Jerry D'Ambrosio, Manager of Educational Content with VectorVest, and it's my pleasure to bring to you this week's special presentation, How to Blend Fundamental and Technical Analysis. Now, to say that fundamental analysts and technical analysts have differing opinions on what moves a stock's price or what moves the market would be an understatement. Fundamental analysts look at macroeconomic factors like earnings and inflation and interest rates. They'll pay attention to market data like retail sales or home sales. They'll look at and pay attention to uh, industry-wide financial information and, of course, the underlying stock's financial situation as well. Their earnings, their liabilities and assets and revenue and sales growth and earnings growth and all of the data that we are bombarded with on a day-to-day -day basis. A fundamental analyst is looking to determine a stock's fair market value. Technical analysts look solely at price and volume. They believe that patterns repeat themselves. And what they look for are favorable situations with price and volume. And they look historically at how traders acted during certain situations which gives insight on how they may act in similar situations in the future. What we want to do is we want to blend the two. I believe both camps are right. There's validity in fundamental valuation. Investors have hung their hats on that type of analysis for many, many years and have tremendous success in the long term in the stock market. There's also validity in swing trading and looking at technical indicators to help pinpoint buy and sell signals. But again, what we want to do is blend the two, and let me show you how. I'm going to open up the VectorVest program, and VectorVest has a suite of both fundamental and technical analysis indicators that make it very easy for us to analyze any stock in the database within, I'd say, about 10 or 15 seconds. When we talk about indicators, VectorVest indicators, I always like to open up a stock analysis report because the definitions are there, and it just makes much more sense to start there. So I'm going to open up, right-click on a stock. We're in the stock viewer. Go to a view stock analysis report. The two indicators that I'm going to start with are, are technical indicators, relative timing and comfort index. Let's start with comfort index. I'm going to scroll down right about here. There it is. So with this stock, this is AEHR. CI is an indicator which reflects a stock's ability to resist severe and or lengthy price declines. CI is based solely upon a stock's long-term price history. So in essence, folks, it is a long-term trend indicator. If the CI and CI is above 1 right now, it's at 1.61. The indicator is on a 0 to 2 scale. The higher above 1, the better. When you have a CI rating of 1.61 and you're looking at a stock graph, you really know what you're going to what you're going to get. You're going to get a stock that moves from bottom left to upper right, not a ton of volatility you're going to see persistent price growth long term because again it's a technical indicator that looks solely at the long term price history our other price trend indicator is relative timing now rt analyzes a stock's price trend it's computed from an analysis of the direction magnitude and dynamics of a stock's price movement day over day week over week quarter over quarter and year over year if a trend dissipates rt will gravitate towards one and relative timing is more of a short term price trend indicator so what we can do is combine both indicators the very best professional traders pay attention to both trends right they pay attention to the underlying trend they pay attention to the short term trend so if I close the stock analysis report here and just go back to the stock viewer, we can sort the list by comfort index. 9,000 plus stocks in the database sorted by the highest comfort index rating at the top. You could see AC, I'm sorry, ASC has a CI of 1.9. I know exactly what I'm going to get when I open up a chart of these top CI stocks. So if I go to graph them, here's a one-year chart of ASC. Beautiful looking graph here, right? Bottom left to upper right. I have CI down at the bottom in yellow. We have RT here in red. The comfort index has been above one since about June of last year. That's when the stock really began to show the ability to resist downturns in the stock market, downturns in the stock's price. Now you look at the hard right edge. The stock has a buy rating. Just got a buy recently. It was a hold and a sell there. So we can very easily determine the long-term trend of the stock by really just looking at CI. Again, above one is, is great, 
above 1.5, this is the chart that you're going to get. We can then layer in relative timing. Now, relative timing right now is at 1.66. Great. So the long-term trend is up. The short-term trend is up as well. But what I'm looking at, and maybe it's just my eye, I'm, just, I'm looking at back here in the beginning of February when the relative timing indicator first crossed above one after being below one. So the long-term trend up, but with the RT below one, you had a short-term downtrend. The stock was a, a hold and a sell and, and falling in price, and RT was below one. That is not the time to buy the stock. Short-term downtrend, either a hold or a sell, and price also falling, right? So what we want to do is wait for price to stop falling. The long-term trend is in our favor. We're looking for a favorable change in the short-term trend. And when the RT indicator goes above one, folks, there it is. Two different ways to you know invest in a stock like this, right? It's got a buy rating. It's at the upper right-hand corner of the page, hard right edge. RT is above 1.6. Fantastic. An absolute buy candidate. Okay? What if you wanted to find stocks, though, whose CI ratings were very high, above 1.5 maybe, but the RT indicator just crosses from below one to above one. We can find those types of stocks. But let's just go through these just to drill home the type of stock that you're expected to see when you pull up a graph of a high CI stock. Here with the CI rating is at 1.87. Relative timing at 1.57. Stock has a buy rating. But look at when the RT first crossed above one. Is that an attractive opportunity to enter into a long-term holding after a corrective period, right? Some of the better times to buy growth stocks, fundamentally sound companies, and I haven't even gotten into our fundamental indicators yet, but fundamentally sound companies after an oversold period. And that oversold period was here. When the stock got a sell rating, it went below our stop price. It reversed quickly, fortunately, and that's what CI stocks do, folks. That's why it's a high CI stock because it is able to withstand these you know, downturns in price. RT first crosses above one here in the beginning of February. Nice early entry, just gets a buy rating there as well. We'll look at the next one. Not a lot of data here, so we'll pass on this one. Here with TRMD, same thing. Look at that CI rating, 1.85. Look at when the RT first crossed above one here. Again, a corrective period where the stock has a sell. RT first crosses above one. Beautiful time to enter into the trade. Not yet a buy, but still a nice entry into a longer term position. Maybe you wait a few days for that transition from a hold to a buy, but you're getting it at a nice early price, right? You're getting it at a discount. So folks, we're just looking at technical indicators here, right? I haven't talked at, at all about earnings or relative value or relative safety. What we want to do when I said this earlier is we want to blend the two. So let me show you a way to do that. I'm going to go into the Unisearch tool, and I am going to open up our Searches Prudent folder. And now this isn't the holy grail of scans. It's a great one, but I'm trying to lead you into an idea, a, a methodology, so that you can kind of take this, build your own scan, or use different scans, but it's the concept that I want to make sure you folks understand. The safe and sound search looks for stocks whose VST is above 1.25, whose relative safety and relative value, both indicators are above 1. So what do we know when the RV is above 1 and the RS is above 1? Well, we know with an RV above 1, the stock has favorable long-term price appreciation potential. If the relative safety is above 1, we know it's a safer investment. Both of these are fundamental indicators. The data that I said a fundamental analyst's analyst goes through to determine fair market value, that data is included in both of those indicators. We don't just provide you with data. We take data and we provide you with actionable, useful information. So when RV above one tells me that the stock has good long-term price appreciation potential, it's a safe investment. It's got a VST, which is our value, safety, and timing indicator above 1.25. And look at the sort. Combining a fundamental indicator with a technical indicator in a way where we rank the stocks by those two indicators. RS times CI. We want the best combination of relative safety and comfort index 
at the very top of the list. So if I go ahead and run that search just as of the close of the 15th, now that was a green light in the price column of the color guard. We always want to pay attention to what the market is doing. So I go ahead and run that search. You have some familiar names at the top, CPRX, SMCI. Let me just close our control panel here. Look at some of the RT scores here. So we understand that these are fundamentally sound companies. Let's take a look at price to value. Remember I said that a fundamental analyst their main goal is to determine what a fair value is for the stock that they're in interested in. They don't really look at price at the time. They're just trying to figure out what, what a fair market value is. Well, we place a value on every stock every day. So here, just looking at price to value, just scanning through, most of these stocks are undervalued. Most of them, not all of them. Some are, tr are trading at a premium. That's okay. It's okay if the fundamentals are favorable. So let's take CELH, for example. Price is considerably higher than the value. 96.66, we value it at 24.53. All right, not a great start. Remember, if this is going to be a long-term holding for you, ideally you want to favor undervalued stocks. But look at the fundamentals. Look at RV, 1.57. Tremendous upside potential over the next couple of years. Relative safety, 1.42. So fundamentally, outstanding indicators there. However, the relative timing is at 0.76. Here with CPRX, undervalued, tremendous upside potential. It's a safe investment, but it is falling in price right now. It's not the time to buy it. 0.64 RT, it also has a sell rating. So let's graph these. I could put on earnings per share. You always want to put on earnings per share. Let me make that an area. I mean, there's so much data that goes into earnings per share. If there's one fundamental indicator that you should always have on a chart, it should be earnings per share. It's the engine that's going to drive this stock's price higher and higher. And no matter if you're looking at a chart and technical indicators, earnings per share should always be there or at least uh, put on there to see the trend of earnings, right? We want to see that trend that we see there, bottom left to upper right. CI rating, very high, 1.67. Remember the sort, RS times CI. So we're going to get high CI stocks at the top. Now, up until recently, this has been a great stock, right? Let me put the rating on, our buy, sell, hold rating. You can see the sell rating back here. The transition from a hold, from sorry, from a sell to a hold to a buy, that's when the RT first crossed above one. CI rating was above one. It was at 1.10, not very high, but still above one. And right now it's going through a, a quiet period here. Stock crashed there on January 23rd. It's settled in. It's now a sell rating because it's below our stop price. The CI rating is still strong. So what are you waiting for? Well, we're waiting for a change in direction right? We know that this is a fundamentally sound company. The search and our fundamental indicators are telling us that. We don't have to keep going back to you know, the spreadsheet to say, okay, what's the RV? We're doing the fundamental analysis up front. Then we look at the chart to identify a more favorable price and volume situation so that we could uh, enter into the investment, okay? What I'm going to look for, like I would put this stock on a watch list now. Unfortunately, it's not the time to buy it. It's got a sell rating and the RT below one, but it's got a strong CI that's telling me that the long-term trend is up. I'm going to look for a transition from a sell to a hold to a buy. That RT indicator going from below one to above one is a fantastic signal of an emerging new short-term trend. Here, SMCI, bottom left to upper right, little volatility. But the CI rating very strong at 1.69. Folks, look at this. Look at the times here where the CI was above one and the stock's RT fell below one and the stock got a sell rating. So we're not, we're not buying into SMCI at all in, in June, most of July. But the stock changes direction, doesn't it? RT goes from below one to above one. Stock transitions from a sell to a hold to a buy. There's a really nice entry into a what you want to be a long-term position. Why should it be a long-term position or what qualifies it to be a long-term position? All right, now I said when it, we 
don't need to go back to the fundamental data. But to answer the question of what qualifies it to be a long-term position, RV qualifies it to be a long-term position. RS, in that it's a safe investment, qualifies it to be a long-term holding. It's also undervalued as well. So again, the point is, when you analyze a stock based on its fundamentals and you hope for it to be a long-term investment, Apply technical analysis indicators like CI and relative timing to identify oversold levels and better buying opportunities at lower prices. We're just recently now looking at the hard right edge. Here's another example though, when RT first crossed above one after a corrective period there. All we're seeing is higher lows along the way over the last year, so we're just looking to Kind of weather the storm during these dips, looks for, look for a better buying opportunity, RT crosses above one, there it is. Here with CELH, price has been falling, it's just off of another 52-week high. Here's CI above one at 1 1.53, so very favorable level. I would put this in a watch list as well and look for a change in direction. I like the pattern of higher lows. I still know that it's a fundamentally sound company. I'm just looking for a better buying opportunity. RT crossing above one, transitioning from a sell to a hold to a buy, there's your opportunity. So how am I going to find stocks like that? Right, That's probably the next question. Great, you're showing us this. You're letting us know kind of what to look for. But how can I find stocks right now that meet the criteria that I'm talking about? Very, very simple. You could take the safe and sound search, add a one-line parameter. I'm going to go here to stocks, capital appreciation. We're going to add RT. I want the RT to be trending, and I want to create a custom trend. And instead of looking over the last day, so essentially what I want to find here is an RT crossover. But rather than looking at a crossover on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm going to look for the crossover on a week-over-week -week basis. So I'm going to change us from days to weeks. Week one, which is the, the week that I run the search, I want the RT to be greater than one. Last week, I want the RT to be less than one. So over the last week, we're looking at an RT crossover, a bullish RT crossover from below one to above one. Nothing has changed here. Fundamental indicators are the same. We're still sorting the same, but we're looking for a new emerging short-term trend. So if I run that search... Here are the stocks. Not many, but let's take a look at the charts. Okay. Now, I would have to look at a weekly chart because we are looking at weekly uh, RT crossover here. So if I just go to a, say, a three-year weekly graph, we have earnings per share at the bottom. Beautiful, particularly over the last couple of years. CI rating is very high at 1.53. The stock has just recently pulled off put the rating on, recommendation, off of a new high. Relative timing, just a week ago, did cross below one, and now it's crossing above one. I'm, I would want to see a little bit more upward momentum, but a nice pullback within an underlying uptrend, very similar, folks, to this area right here, right? If I were to run this same search on August 8th, I would find MPC. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to the end of that week, August 12th. Looks like the crossover happened on the 8th, but we'll go to the end of the week on August 12th. Run the search. There's Marathon Petro right there. So it found it during the week of the 8th, right at the end of the week. So your entry is the following week. Nice, nice little corrective period. High or low put in. High CI stock. Good earnings. Favorable fundamentals, we know that because the search found the stock and looked for those indicators, but a nice new emerging trend. So this was just run here. Another one, AutoZone, beautiful entry here. Price has just pulled back off of a new 52-week high. It's begun to rally over the last couple weeks. Relative timing has just gone from below one to above one. Earnings per share strong, CI indicator 1.29. And you could just continue to go down the list. I'm going to favor ones like O'Reilly, actually, whose RT clearly went below one recently and has now transitioned from below one to above one in a much cleaner manner. A couple of these other ones, a little more volatile. RT just hanging out right at that one level. Really going to favor the ones where RT has pulled back, gone well below one, like here. Here's DHT. 
well below one and has just now recently crossed above one. New emerging trend. Look at the CI, 1.59. So it's a nice little scan, guys. Here's FTNT. Clearly the trend has changed. I mean, shoot, if you just look at a trend line here, connecting the lower highs, clearly the trend has changed. The stock rating has gone from a hold to a buy, and the relative timing indicator also gone from below one to above one. Now, this is not a high CI stock, but the CI is moving in the right direction. Maybe you do wait for it to cross above one. But a nice little scan there, guys. Again, this is not a, the holy grail of scans. I wanted to leave you with an idea or a basic concept of finding fundamentally sound companies with high CI ratings, right? We're adding the technical layer to it with our long-term trend indicator, CI, and then applying the RT indicator just first crossing above one, giving you a nice new emerging short-term trend within a strong underlying uptrend. Well, folks, this concludes this week's special presentation. Hope you got a little something out of it. Any questions, give our support department a call. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care, everybody.